Bacteria, and we are here with Laura Friedman, which is one of our favorite artists, and we are surrounded by the only available painting that Laura has, because she's super young and she's already almost sold out. And uh, we found Laura a few months ago, and she's lovely, of course. Mm -hmm. We wrote to her on Instagram to start a collaboration, because uh, our art director, Alisa, she's not here, unfortunately. She discovered uh, Laura and she said, oh my God, look at these artists, look at these artists. And we were uh, just amazed that you were also so nice and you wanted to come to Barcelona. So yesterday we had our opening event of so the Remagen Realities with the, the Sousa Gallery and uh, Laura was part of it. And um, we decided to interview her just to let us, her guide us through your process and understand mm -hmm how you, you shift, you know, from uh, dancing into paintings and how it feels not to be so successful. Also, I have to say that uh, yeah, last night um, we had a dinner with collectors and Laura was the main topic of the <laughs> dinner. And uh, the, the dinner was quite long, so it, it lasted until 3 a.m. And really, you were the main topic together yeah. with uh, Anna Coutinho, the, the, the main topic of the dinner, and this is just fantastic. As a gallerist, this is just fantastic, because it means that our choice and our selection, it was the right one. And we also study, as a strategy, we study how people react with, um, with the painting, with the artist, no? And the reaction of people was just fabulous. So it's so nice to hear. Yeah, yes, uh, and I don't know when um, how you you started, how you shifted, no, from dancing into painting. So as a child, um, first of all, I grew up in um, Paris, France. I was born and raised there. My family is Russian and Ukrainian, and as a child, I was extremely shy. <laughs> So my favorite things to do were those that didn't involve talking. <laughs> I loved to draw, paint, and dance, until eventually I picked dancing. So throughout school, high school, I went to professional dance school. I was dancing every day. I continued drawing, painting, but much less. I remember doing some art courses in the summer, things like that, because it was still something I enjoyed a lot. After high school, I decided to study because all of a sudden I wasn't sure if um, being a ballerina was the right choice for me. Um, so I studied, I went to the American University of Paris and a year later I transferred to Yale University. I majored in economics, graduated and then to everyone's surprise, I was like, okay, I do want to be a ballerina mm -hmm. after all. I'm more sure than ever, like this is what I wouldn't do. Uh, long story short, I moved back to Paris, started getting back into shape, training, auditioning. I uh, got a contract at the Israel Ballet. Mm -hmm. Moved to Tel Aviv, loved the mm -hmm. city, the culture, mm -hmm. the weather, and everything was just amazing. People had a great time. And so then, as you know, COVID happened. Yeah. First lockdown. Um, I was stuck at home. Obviously, I couldn't rehearse, perform remotely, so I had a ridiculous amount of free time. And that's when I really rediscovered this other passion of mine, which was art. Um, so one of the first things I did was look up tutorials, you know, start practicing again, hmm. different techniques, um, followed Instagram, uh, artists on Instagram that I really liked, that inspired me. That's good. I did a few art courses also, like online courses. Mm -hmm. um, so just really like exploring, experimenting um, with art. Wow. So just by chance, yeah. we're here basically. Thanks to time. COVID, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. And then after the lockdown, back to dancing, then there was another lockdown. So again, you know, I did a bit of digital art as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until um, about a year ago, actually, summer of 2022. Mm -hmm. I decided that I will end my dance career. Mm -hmm. I achieved almost everything I wanted to achieve as a dancer. It was also important for me to stop while I was still good. <laughs> and um, I felt like I had, you know, more to say in art 
and so I became a full-time artist. That's fantastic. And yeah, since then, I've been doing um, art fairs, exhibitions, um, mm -hmm. projects. By the way, there. just to say that Arteria is the first gallery. Th this is crazy, but mm -hmm. I'm very proud to say that Arteria is the first gallery that is exhibiting Laura Friedman in Spain. Right. So, also, the first gallery actually that I'm uh, that's representing me. Really? No, yes. So, Laura, I want Laura to paint like. Now you have to paint 20 <laughs> and we have to do a solo show of you. I would love that. We have that. to go to Madrid, Paris. We, we're going to do that. I like, would love that. Really, yesterday it was very important to understand how people react to you. Mm -hmm. And of course, we, we told everyone, Laura Friedman, Laura Friedman, you saw it. Like, we support mm -hmm. you. And I think it's also important to teach you know, to, to artists that sometimes now there is this big uh, cliche that now there is Instagram artists that need gallery, but that's not true. No, I, I also disagree with that. Good, because the relationship between the gallerist and the gallery in general, with, because I want you to feel like the whole team of Arteria, our, our team is fully supporting you and fully mm -hmm. in love with your work and also with your personality. And it's important that it match, no? Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, the relationship between the gallerist and the artist is fundamental because Definitely. we do lots of work in order to support your reputation, your grow, you know, like the, your development. Laura is now in Lisbon doing an art residency with another yes. gallery, yes. but we don't worry about that. It's great. <laughs> and we're going to do our work here. And right. so the, the result in the, in the, um, as I said, the result from people that knew you just digitally from mm -hmm. Instagram and saw your, your painting live yesterday it was just amazing. So what we were telling people is that if you don't buy Laura now, you cannot afford her in one year. And this is what we really believe in. Indeed, Laura, I want to tell you something in front of the camera. We bought this. Wow. We, yes, we bought this. We don't want to sell this to anyone. We want us for, for us. And I'm so happy. <laughs> yes, I'm so happy it's yours. You, yes, I wanted to tell you uh, live because mm -hmm. uh, I think it's very, very nice um, to share and, and uh, keep this moment forever, you know? Right. We, this is ours. Really so I really Thank need you. that you Thank sign you. it, that you um, give me the certificate. Mm -hmm. And also, we want uh, the lover uh, something similar because it's very <laughs> important also that um, to to that you tell us what you want to say you know because some people can think it's very much illustration but there is way more right. and if um you can describe how you give titles because right. we are very fun of the titles in, in the painting so why for example the one that we just bought is called the engaged mm -hmm. so the titles um i would say they come to me once the painting is finished or sometimes in the process as well. It's definitely not something I plan before. I have to wait to see the finished piece, um, analyze, you know, the expression, the colors, everything together. And then I come up with the title. So here the engaged, because I think, you know, she's so focused looking at someone, she's engaged in a conversation. That was the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the idea behind the title. Mm -hmm. we, had, uh, we had a few emerging artists, very young, mm -hmm. uh, that when, they, when we unpack the engaged, they were looking at the hand that you right. painted. They were like, wow, how, how can I learn how to paint this way? Because probably in the camera it's not clear, but the realistic, mm -hmm. the, the, right. the, the result is, is very realistic. And it feels like it's alive, I don't know, like it feels very yeah. alive. I, I paint very realistic faces and hands. Yeah. Um, and then I think also they're so realistic because there's this contrast with the body and the background that are just, mm -hmm. I mean, the bodies could be an and abstract painting on its own. What, what inspires you? Um, so I portray the female figure. Mm. So being a woman myself, I also, I was raised by my mom and my grandmas, grew up with my sister. Dance classes were only girls. So I was surrounded by women, girls, um, very much inspired by them. Um, really fascinated by their beauty, but also their strength. And um, 
inspiration i find inspiration everywhere, everywhere. i think yeah so just you, life you like never, you never had um artistic block i did but i think it's important to you know as much as i think a lot of inspiration comes from within like interests past experiences things like that dance is obviously a huge part of who i am um I think also just by going out in the world, you know, you can find inspiration in random places, like on the street. Sometimes I see an interesting shape that then I want to try out or mm -hmm. colors. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it does happen to me to have some creative blocks and then I just shift my focus. I will go to a live drawing class or just sketch outside, you know, take my mind off um, the current work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, colors say. is very important in, in your art. Yes. No? And I, you change a lot. There are lots of different. You use blue. I change, yes. You add another blue that was available. Yeah, I mean, I would get bored, I think, just using the same colors. Okay, okay. Um, and um, do you have a particular... Uh, uh, also, how you felt, like when you saw, since it's something very recent, no? Right. That you start painting. How, how you felt when you sold your first painting and, and to who? So the first paintings was one of my first, it was just really small a form paper. Okay. Um, Classical. Yeah. Okay, okay. One of the paintings I um, created during uh, the pandemic. And I put them on in a Facebook group and just, mm -hmm. you know, someone messaged me and bought it, came, picked it up. It was, it was really exciting. <laughs> um, and I think it motivated me to, to continue. And there is a painting you are particularly proud of? Um, I don't think so. I you, think all of them, yeah, yeah. So you don't feel they all represent, you know, different moments. Um, mm -hmm. but it's not life. you, or it's you. If you I mean, I think you. it's not. I don't paint myself. I take, you know, references, photo references. Um, I change them, of course. But I do think, you know, as an artist, your work does reflect you yeah. and who you are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, it's very important that artists visit the exhibition if they can, because it's a, to meet the artist, to know the personality is a huge part of right. the, the sales. Also. And I think or you understand, art. you understand the work better. Yes. But also for me, sometimes, you know, looking at my work, I understand myself better. Like, why do I paint what I paint? Mm, that's very good. And how, um, how you see, like, the, the art world is changing no? very fast. So I'm very new yes. in the art world. It's, uh, it's different to the dance world, I would say. There's also, I know, a lot of criticism, but it's more acceptable in a so way. So you always accept critics? Yes, critics. I think my dance background made me very yeah, maybe, tough maybe. to criticism because I was, you know, we'd get corrections all the time. And you understand it's the only way to improve. In art, I think it's a little different because... Um, at the end of the day, like I said, the art has to represent you. And as much as it's important, you know, to listen to other people's opinions and what they think about your work, you have to be the first one to be happy um, mm -hmm. with your work. And obviously not everyone's going to like it. And I think that's also not the point of, mm -hmm. of creating. If you, if you correct, I agree. Mm -hmm. It's very important that because some sometimes we hold back ourselves from creation because we we are afraid that, oh my God, how public, how audience, how the how other they in general react, no? right. will react. But this is not important because mm -hmm. every voice no, is important. So your right. inner voice is creating that. It's very, it's very beautiful what you're saying about the COVID because COVID was a big bad moment no, of our recent uh, experience. No? Definitely. But if COVID can do that, then let's have another one, you know, like, why not? <laughs> no, I'd rather not, but, but it's, I, it's I understand the approach, what you mean. It's the positive approach mm -hmm. towards difficulties that, that is very important in this case, because COVID was a very hard and, and tough moment for everyone. I remember I was um, staying in a room, I didn't have my apartment yet, my family was far away because my family was in Italy and I was in Barcelona staying in a little room. We couldn't go out, mm -hmm. and me too. I I used that time to go in inside, mm -hmm. and you did the same. Definitely. And so that's that's uh, my life changed also afterwards. Mm -hmm. And um, how you would recommend um, like those artists, little artists, young artists that 
unpacked, for example, your, your painting, they were so, oh, wow, wow, what you would tell them now, like what you would tell to emerging artists that don't have the, the courage yet, mm -hmm. yet, because you can always change, what you would suggest, what would, would be the, your um, suggestion, your tips as Laura Friedman now and Laura Friedman three years ago? I would say to just continue working and, you know, sometimes I think when you force yourself to work, ideas come to you and also to look inside yourself, you know, the work has to be honest, it has to represent who you are, you can't copy something or you can to practice, but yes. then at the end of the day it has to be your voice and I think okay. that's very important. Okay, very good. Thank you for coming. and. Thank you so um, much. Let's let's continue this collaboration that is just uh, super like powerful. That. I think you are super powerful. Your <laughs> energy is fantastic. I hope you. you can feel it <laughs> from a video. But uh, thank you, Laura, for being here. Thank you.